My name is Kelly Hollins. I was born in Newham, England. I was raised as a Christian. I was brought up in Canning Town, the East End. We regularly attended church on a Sunday. I didn't quite understand actually at the time why we was going. It was just like to see other friends every Sunday we used to go. And my parents would go into the other side of the church and we'd go into the other side and it was called Sunday School. Um, and me and my friends, we never used to really listen or take much notice actually. We just sort of talk amongst ourselves and not take any notice. So I, actually I didn't really learn much from going to church at all. I was confirmed at about the age of 12. Even when I was confirmed, I didn't actually know why I was getting confirmed. It's just that my parents said that I had to go to win extra lessons, like in the church, to learn more. But I still never really took anything in. And it was just like a ceremony that we was going to on that Sunday. And it was going to be a little bit different than going to Sunday school. And we just walked to the front and the vicar said a few words. And then I was confirmed. So I wasn't actually looking for religion until maybe about six years ago when I decided to try and find out. About six years ago I was in a relationship with a Turkish man and he asked me what, what my religion was so I said Christian and when I asked him his he said Muslim so I started asking him a few questions because then I gained an interest because I wanted to know about what he believed in and the different beliefs and I wanted to understand and it was only later on that I realised that he didn't actually practice Islam. From around 2007 onwards when I first started looking into Islam I was more looking for a belief in a religion because I didn't understand Christianity I wanted to find something that I really believed in. This is my very good friend Natasha. We grew up together. We've always been friends since we was little. We was always around each other's houses. We always had sleepovers. We was always very close together. Even when we left school and we got jobs and then we moved away from each other a bit further than we was, we still always remained in contact. I don't think there was ever a day that we didn't speak to each other. Kelly's my best friend. We've actually grown up together. Um, and we've always uh, remained close. Me and Kelly actually went to school together, we've actually grown up together um, and um, you know we've always kept in contact even though we've had children and we've lived separately in different areas. I actually started researching myself into the region. Um, I actually just phoned her one time and we was on the phone for a long time and I just you know was telling her loads of things because it you know it was all new to me and I just like I said um, I hope you understand because you know you've, you've been my best friend and you know you've always been there and sort of thing. And when I explained things to her, um, you know I was quite even more surprised because she just like, oh you know like if something touched her, I don't know what it was, but she, straight away even while I was talking to her, she said, oh you know that's amazing what you're telling me. The first time Natasha told me that she'd been researching into Islam, she was just so overwhelmed on the phone, and I think it was almost three hours that we was talking to on the phone. And she was just trying to tell me so much. And then afterwards, I just immediately had to go and I went on to Google and I just started looking into information. And then I just felt exactly like what she was feeling and I could feel myself. And it was just so amazing. And then I had to phone her up and then we were discussing. And I think every day... Um, went to Turkey for one year and I think she was hoping that something would happen there. Uh, being an um, Islamic country that, you know, she would um, find... Uh, Islam there, but it, it wasn't meant to be at that time. Um, and I think that now, uh, you know, through tell me telling her my story, um, something happened to her, and I think it's made a great impact on her life. Ed was saying, Why are you doing that? You can't. He said, I can't change my religion. He said, You can't do that. How can you do that? I said, Because last week when I told him that I'd taken the Shahada, What's that? What have you done? What is this? And he got the piece like the piece of paper. He's like, but you can't just change, you are Church of England. And I said to him, yeah, but what does it mean, Dad? You keep saying I'm Christian, but what does it mean? And actually, he couldn't answer, and he doesn't go to church now. We was, never had no rules or anything, like, you know, there wasn't anything particular that you must do or you mustn't do. So it's just like, yeah, I'm a Christian, and that's it. <laughs> Even me and my dad couldn't answer. And then my mum actually sat there and said, but we don't go to church now. <laughs> and 
him, I think my dad said to him, he said, will I pray? And she went, well, I don't. <laughs> so yeah, I think they're starting to think things actually themselves now. <laughs> A lot of things with my mum and dad though, my parents, has been really difficult. Like my dad said to me oh, about a month ago now though, but they are getting used to the idea now. They're actually having a better understanding. Whereas before, if they, they read that in the paper, they would have just straight away said, oh, another terrorist. But now, yeah, they're changing their mind. So they're getting a better insight, I think, on things. My younger sister was actually quite surprised, but I thought that she, wouldn't have an interest at all actually about anything but she was asking me lots of questions and actually when people some of my family was asking questions why Kelly why is Kelly doing that why is she converting my sister actually said just leave her alone she isn't doing anyone any harm and we used to go out drinking together we used to go clubbing together and now we don't go out don't drink any alcohol anymore and she actually said she wishes she could do the same she wishes she didn't go out as much and she doesn't want to drink anymore. But I think a lot of it is because your friends are doing it. So because your friends are going out, clubbing and drinking, it's just something to do. But I've stopped going out. I don't drink alcohol anymore. And I actually feel much better for not doing it. Alcohol just causes so many problems. And I just, when I think now that I used to drink and go out, I didn't realize at the time it was wrong. But if I would have understood then, I wouldn't have done a lot of the things that I've done. Doing the same thing, going to work, seeing to the kids, going to sleep and that was it. But now I wake up in the morning, I wake up to pray and it's a reason to live and I feel like I just want to wake up every day now to please Allah and I feel so much more at peace with myself and especially when I go out and I'm all covered up, I feel so much more comfortable and I feel like I've found a real peace now within my life and a whole new family as well within the Muslim community. And what do you think, Summer? Well, I find that because you, you used to drink before sometimes, but now yeah, there's no drinking and you've got more commitment where you pray every day and we, you, we go to the mosque on Saturday. Well, before. Since researching Islam, I found that the more and the more I read about it, the more I want to find out. I just want to strengthen my iman, my faith, and gain as much knowledge as I can. And I just feel like there's so much more to life than I realised before. I never appreciated how much we actually have. And things, everything is created from Allah, and we all come from Allah. And I just got a, a whole new different outlook on life now. I just appreciate everything and I feel so blessed with what we have. And it just completely has changed my life completely for the better. And how do you feel, Summer? I find that when my mum is learning, I want to learn as well. Because my mum knows, knows more than me and I want to catch up with her. And yesterday in the mosque, because they was, normally I would go to the kids part where they don't learn anything. But I stayed with mum because I wanted to learn more and more. And then they went off to pray and I found that I wanted to come with them. Because it's like a whole new chapter that you didn't know was there before. After the 9-11, I just thought that all Muslims were terrorists. If I heard anyone say anything about a Muslim, straight away I would just immediately think of a terrorist. So I thought that Muslims were bad people. I never really thought too much about it then. I wasn't interested in learning about the religion because of that. When you read in the paper and about the media, they're not portrayed as nice people. So I had a bad opinion of Muslims until I began researching for myself and beginning to find out what a true Muslim is. And it's nothing to do with terrorism that's against their religion. To hurt or kill or harm another human being is a major sin in Islam. I find quite a difference between the Christian families and the Muslim families. Whilst looking into Islam, I found such a closeness between the Muslim families and the friendships between them. When I regularly attend the mosque and the people that I've met there, um, instantly they'd call me sister and I just felt so at ease and I just felt so welcomed and it just made such a huge difference to me that they actually considered me as family and it was just like I had a whole new family and I never experienced this before. When I'm learning things and you get verses 
from the Quran which says Allah says and Prophet Muhammad says so I think because it's, it's written there that you shouldn't do this then I don't want to do it no one's actually told me I think that with my mum and dad and my family first of all they thought that my friend told me you know cover up and you've got to do this and actually before I knew any Muslims when I used to see the women covered up I used to think it's because their husbands or their boyfriends have told them to cover up. But I said to my mum, nobody told me to cover up. It's just something that I wanted to do. So now I understand as well that the, the way I looked at things before, the way I looked at the Muslim women, it was wrong because I automatically just assumed people, their husbands, boyfriends are making them cover up. But yeah, nobody told me to. And actually here, because there's not a Muslim community, it's been quite hard actually even learning how to pray because I've got no one to show me. I've only been reading the books and I think it's a lot different. When I go to the mosque, then I can watch and learn. So even with the headscarf, I've had no one to actually show me and I think, am I putting this on right? Is it right? Is it wrong? And I don't know. So it's been quite hard, actually. I, I, when my dad first saw me, yeah, he was, what have you got that on for? What are you wearing that for? And then I said to him, but what about the nuns? Nobody says, what have they got that on their head for? And they're covering their hair, but nobody questions the nuns. I went out to the shop in Ilford and I bought um, two of the headscarves and the hijabs. And when I got home, I tried it on and I actually felt so comfortable and I felt so much better about myself that I wanted to wear it. Nobody told me that I had to, but I felt like I wanted to. And I'm I feel fine as long as you're happy. And it's better because everybody's in competition with each other, I think. What do you feel when we're outside, if, about people when we're outside? I don't mind. I don't. It's normal, really. If somebody wants to wear it, it's their own choice. When I came to the school summer, dressed in hijab, what did you feel like? How did it make you feel? I didn't really mind. It's just... Nobody really said anything, so I don't think they mind either. But if, if I was to wear a hijab, I think it'd be a bit more different. He didn't actually like me wearing it, but I said that I'm not doing it to please anyone else. I'm just doing it to please Allah, and I feel much better in myself, so I'm going to carry on wearing the hijab. But I think he's got more used to seeing me now, so they're OK. When this is Savannah, my youngest daughter. She's 13 years old. My reaction when my mum verted was a bit of a shock. <laughs> Why was it a shock, Samantha? I don't know. Because I didn't really see it coming. Are you happy? If you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> so where do you see us like in the future? And what about yourself? Well, I see us in the future still a big like happy family but then I can't really plan ahead and I don't know quite where I see myself. Do you think it's brought us closer at all or not? Um, probably a little bit because we don't argue as much as we used to. <laughs> I hope that Savannah can learn from me to respect her body more because I feel like when I look at photos of how I was before I feel quite ashamed the way I used to dress and just put all my body on show and especially with my daughters I don't want them walking around and showing off all their bodies and it's asking for trouble really and you know they're my little girls so I'd prefer it if they can follow in my footsteps now and cover up a little bit I'm hoping and I hope that my children will follow my footsteps and I'll be a better example especially better than going out, drinking, clubbing, smoking, all the things that are no good for us anyway. I don't want my children to be like that. Probably they don't want to listen, probably. Probably they think the same thing about Muslims being terrorists, so a lot of people don't even want to listen, so they're not interested. But I think, yeah, until you look into it yourself, you can't understand.